Hello, my name is Mark Addis. I'm an attorney licensed to practice law in the state of Maryland. I've been practicing since 1980, approximately 37 years. I've uh, been mainly practicing in the area of personal injury, car accidents, and workers' compensation. And the purpose of today's video is to discuss an actual trial date in a car accident case. Typically, once a case cannot be settled, then the case needs to go to court. In court, there will be a trial. At a trial, um, witnesses will be called and it will be necessary for you as the person that was injured in the accident to actually come and testify. The purpose of today's video is to go over the questions that you would typically be asked. To start off the case, your lawyer would probably ask a series of questions just to let the other side as well as the judge or jury know who you are. Typical questions would be, what's your name, obviously? How old are you? How far did you go in school? Uh, are you married or single? Do you have any children? Were you in the military service? Um, we would also ask you whether you were employed or not, what type of work you did, how long you worked there. Also, typically we'll ask you about some of your outside interests in order to establish what type of person you are. Obviously, on cross-examination, the main question that the other side may ask you is if you have any criminal convictions that would be relevant to the issues of credibility. If they are, then they're admissible. If they're not, then normally they're not admissible. The purpose of all of these questions, just so the judge or jury can get to know you and get a better feel for what type of person you are and whether you're going to believe what you have to say. After outlining um, those type of questions and giving that information to the trier of fact, then we will get into the facts of the particular accident. Typical questions will go as follows. On the day of the accident, where were you coming from and where were you going? Typically the person will say I was leaving my house and I was on the way to work or some other answer like that. And I'll ask them, uh, what route did you take? What roads were you traveling on? Just so we can show that they're familiar with the way they were going. Then I'll ask them what road they were on immediately prior to the accident. Then I will have them describe uh, how many lanes the road is, the nature of the surface, what direction they were going, um, and typically, uh, and what lane they were in. Typically, if they can tell me whether they're going north, south, east, or west, that would be helpful. If I feel that the trier of fact in this particular case would be familiar with the area, then I'll ask them, for instance, where you're going toward downtown, away from downtown. Uh, those type of questions, just so we can set up where they were when the accident happened. I may also ask them what the speed limit was and also ask them how fast they were going. Once those questions are answered, um, then I would ask them typically whether if this happened at an intersection, were there any traffic control devices at the intersection? Um, that would typically be either a red light green light or could be a stop sign or some other traffic control device and then I'll ask them how that device works in this particular situation. So um, if it's a left turn case and there's a left turn arrow then I'll ask them the sequence of the lights. If uh, it's a stop sign I'll ask them if it's a four-way stop sign or a two-way stop sign so that we know who would have the right of way. It could be extremely relevant in a case, for instance, a red light case, whether um, the light sequences that the turn arrow comes on in the beginning of the sequence or comes on at the end. We would also need to know whether the light for each way, meaning north or south, changes from red to green at the same time or if they're staggered. Then I'll ask them, all right, and at this point, I, I, so far I've led them through the questions I need answered, then I have to ask a more general, non-leading question like, please describe what happened in the accident. At that point, they're going to tell me what happened. Either, you know, they're traveling down the road, Liberty Road, whatever the name of the road is, they had a green light, and then the person came from their right, ran a stop sign, and struck their vehicle. 
Once I have them establishing exactly how the accident happened, I would typically then ask them to go back and describe in detail in slow motion exactly what happened. So I'll say, all right, um, as you were approaching the intersection, did you notice what color the light was? For instance, if it's a light case, or uh, did you have any traffic control device? And if they don't have a stop sign, the other one does, they'll just say, no, I don't have a stop sign. The other person did. And I'll ask them, how fast were you going at that point? And they'll say, whatever it was, hopefully something below the speed limit. Um, and then I'll, if in a red light case, I'll ask them if they'd continue to look at the light, because often people will testify that the last time they saw the light was, you know, a half a block away, and obviously it can change during that particular period. So it's important that they continue to observe what's going on all the way through the intersection. Um, I will then ask them whether the person approached them from their right or their left. Um, and whether they, if it's a stop sign case, whether they saw them at the stop sign, did they in fact stop at the stop sign or did they just run the stop sign? If it's a red light case, again, I'll ask them if the light they had had been red and then had just turned green or um, if it had been solid green all the way out or whether the light had just turned yellow and what they did as a result of that because all of those things can affect what happened in the accident. Then I will ask them when they first saw the defendant's vehicle, meaning the car that caused the particular accident. Um, and then usually, hopefully that's sometime before the intersection. Then I'll ask them after that, you know, what did they see next? And then if they didn't see them until, you know, a second before the impact, I'll ask them, you know, where were they coming from? How fast were they going? And from what direction? And those type of questions. Other questions I may ask is about the traffic before the accident. You know, did you have any vehicles to your left? Did you have any vehicles to your right? Did you have any vehicles in front of you? Were there any vehicles behind you? How about for the other car? Did he have any other vehicles? Good uh, red light case. In that situation, suppose the defendant ran a red light and he's, the road he's coming from has three lanes and the other two cars are stopped and he's going. So I'll ask them whether there was traffic in the same direction or maybe there was across the street going the opposite direction that the defendant was going and all those people were stopped, but he's the only one going. That would be an indication that he may run a red light. And I'll ask the same thing about the direction we're going. If there's cars in the same direction we're going, did they go? Were they next to us and they went? Uh, or did they stop? All of those would be irrelevant on the issue of um, what happened in the particular accident. Then I'll have them describe the impact. So they tell us that the cars collided. Uh, what did you do immediately prior to the accident? So they can explain what, if anything, they tried to do to avoid the accident. Describe the impact, very important. Value of cases a lot of times has to do with how hard the impact is and how much damage there is to the car. It makes it a lot more believable that you were injured if there's significant damage to the car for a significant impact. So I typically have the client describe the impact, either as soft, medium, hard, um, or something more descriptive than that. And uh, what happened to them immediately after? Did the airbags go off? What happened to their body inside the car? Did they go forward? Did they go backward? Now, typically, if you're struck in the rear, you would think that your body would go forward first, but the laws of physics actually say that you would go backwards first and then forward. If you're struck from the side, you would, suppose you were struck from the right side, you might expect that your body would go to the left, but typically it would actually go to the right under the laws of physics and vice versa. If you're struck from the left, you would typically go to your left first. And the reason for that is, as I understand it, is you usually go in the direction where the force is coming from. Um, so I ask them what happened to them inside the car. They're going to say they went forward, backward, whatever. I'll ask them if they struck anything inside the car. They'll tell us what they struck, what happened to their body inside the car. Then I'll ask them as a result of the accident, were you injured? Obviously before that, in addition, if they had anyone else in their car, I'll ask them if they had anyone else in the car, who they were, where everyone was sitting. Um, I will also ask what happened to them as a result of the accident, whether they were injured, what happened to their bodies. Um, I'll then ask what happened immediately after the accident. 
Did, were you able to get out of the vehicle? Did you talk to the other driver? Did you talk to the police officer? Who called the police? How long did it take for the police to get there? Uh, immediately after the accident, were you injured? And they'll tell me either yes or no, or that they felt the pain later. If they were injured at the scene, what pain were they feeling? What parts of their body was hurt? They tell me they hurt, for instance, their head, neck, or back, or all of the three, then I'll ask them to describe each uh, body part and what problems they were having at that time. Um, if there was any blood, uh, if there were any cuts, any of those physical injuries would obviously be helpful um, as far as evaluating. In case they're obviously not helpful if you have them. Were there any broken bones? Did an ambulance come? What did the other person do at the scene of the accident? What happened with the other people in the accident? Uh, were they injured? What were they complaining about? Uh, when the policeman arrived, what did the police, who did the police officer speak to? Did you talk to the other driver? What did the other driver say? Did he admit fault? Were there any witnesses at the time of the accident? Did you get their names? What did they tell you? Were there any passengers in the other vehicle? Uh, did you speak with them? What did they tell you? Uh, what happened next? Did you go away in an ambulance? Did you go to the hospital that day? Did you go to the doctor? What, what did, medical treatment did you have? Let's say they went to the hospital. They went to the hospital, I'll ask them, what did they do at the hospital? What treatment did they provide? Did they take x-rays? If so, what body parts? What complaints did you have at the hospital? How did you feel at the hospital? And have them describe each particular body part. Uh, what treatment did they provide at the hospital? What recommendations did they make at the hospital? Um, then I'll ask them about what happened next. Did they go home? They went home. Um, did, what did they do next? Did they go to bed? Were they able to sleep? What problems were they having at home? Then I'll ask them about what happened the next day. Did they go to the doctor? Did they receive any medical treatment? Um, if so, where did they get the medical treatment? Who sent them for the medical treatment? What treatment was provided? What complaints did they have? Did the doctor there take any x-rays? Did they get any medications either there or at the hospital? Um, and then what treatment was provided by the doctor's office? If they had physical therapy there, I'll ask them to describe the therapy. What types of therapy did you get? How long did it take? When you're at the doctor's office, how long were you there? What examination did he do? Um, if you had x-rays, what body parts did you have x-ray? How did you feel at that point? Um, then I will go through, from that point on, go through the, the treatment process that they have. If they had, you know, four weeks of therapy, how often did they go? What types of therapy did they have? Um, were they working at the time of the accident? If so, did they miss any time from work? If so, what type of work did they do? Why were they unable to work? What is it about the accident affect their ability to, or inability to do the type of work that they normally do? How much money do they normally make? How much money did they lose as a result of the accident? Then I'll ask them how they felt for those four or five weeks while they had treatment. Um, you know, what, what is it that if they were unable to work, why they couldn't, if they were able to go to work but not do their full duties, what parts of the job couldn't they do, and what about the injuries they had prevented them from doing that? I'll ask them about their home activities. What do they normally do and what were they unable to do as a result of the accident? And describe why that is. Um, how did it affect their home life? How did it affect their ability to take care of their children? How did it affect their uh, relationship with their spouse if they're married? How did it affect their everyday life? That all goes to the issue of pain and suffering. Then I'll ask them when they no longer felt any pain, if at all. If they're still having problems, I'll ask them what if any permanent uh, problems they're having, have them describe them, have them describe whether it affects their permanent ability to do the type of work they were doing, what limitations they presently have, how it affects their ability to do their everyday activities, and what permanent limitations they have with their everyday activities. All right, and then basically that would be what we would do on direct examination. Next thing uh, will happen in a trial is cross-examination of that witness. Cross-examination typically is an effort to put a dent into the story that's just been told. Typical cross-examination gets into, one, the nature of the 
impact, whether it's a lot or a little. So in an accident where the impact is relatively minor, the lawyer may show pictures of the damage to the cart, to the plaintiff, which would be the person suing, ask them to do, identify the pictures and ask them where the damage is and just make a big deal about the fact that there's very little damage if, or if any. Sometimes there isn't any damage to the car because people are not cars. And cars are made to um, take punishment that people are not able to take. Um, and then present the pictures to the judge and then later on make the argument that the person couldn't have been hurt because there's little or no damage to the car. Typically, you may ask them about prior injuries that they've had either to the same parts of body or just maybe prior car accidents or other type of accidents. If a person's had other accidents in the past, the defense lawyer will typically ask about those, ask about whether they were injured in those cases, who they treated with, and whether the injuries that it was same or similar to the injuries that were involved in this accident. The reason they ask that is, if the person's had a lot of accidents, this can affect their credibility because it makes them look like all they do is get involved in accidents and file claims. And it makes them look like the defense lawyer will try and make them look like a professional claims person. The other reason they may ask that is the person may have had a recent injury to the same body part and may have been treating up through the time uh, that the new accident happened or maybe he had completed his treatment but he had a permanent disability as a result of the accident and that the medical records from the two accidents very, look, very much look similar and may argue later on that the injuries that the claimant says he had as a result of the accident were actually due to pre-existing conditions. In addition, um, they may ask about prior workers' compensation claims just to see what other injuries they may have had that may have been similar to the type of injuries that were involved in this particular case. Also in cross-examination, if liability, meaning what happened, is disputed, you're obviously going to be asked questions to try and um, put a dent in your story as to whether you were at fault or not. They're going to ask you how fast you were going. Again. Uh, they may slow down and ask you other questions to, in, to indicate that it, the accident was somehow your fault or if it wasn't your fault that you had an opportunity to avoid the accident may have had the last clear chance to avoid the accident. Also, they may ask questions to try and make it look like that you, in fact, contributed to the accident. If the defendant's story, meaning the other driver's story, is, is that you had the red light, they may ask you about that. They may ask you when the last time you looked at the light is. They may ask you how fast you were going to see if you were going over the speed limit. They may ask you the last time you looked at your speedometer to see if you even have any idea how fast you were going. They may ask you if you had your radio on, the music on. Um, you know, if you had other people in the vehicle, or if you were talking to the vehicle, anything to make it look like perhaps you had been distracted. If you have a prior criminal record, like for forgery or um, theft or something like that, they can ask you about prior criminal convictions to make it look like uh, you're the type of person that may lie uh, in court. Those type of questions they can ask you. Some criminal record is not admissible if it doesn't go to truth or veracity. Um, they can ask you about your injuries themselves, you know, ask you about the treatment you had and see how familiar you are with the actual treatment. They will also see if your uh, complaints in court are similar to the complaints that you gave to the doctors. In addition, they may try and see if you're exaggerating to try and make you play up your injuries as much as possible and then compare it to your medical records. So if the damage to your car is relatively minor and you've missed three months in work, they're going to point that out to see to show the trier fact, the judge or jury, that perhaps you're exaggerating your injuries. It makes sense. It would, makes no sense you would miss that much time from work in a case where there was hardly any damage to the car. They may ask what type of work you do and try and show that you could have, in fact, actually gone to work. Or they may ask about your work history to show that it's not unusual for you to miss a lot of time from work or that you've had a million other jobs and therefore you really don't care about work. They, on Going back to the liability again, um, they may ask you in more detail about what happened either before or after the accident. A lot of times I'll do that um, to try and get a better idea of, you know, where the person was coming and where they were going and perhaps 
in some way show that the accident couldn't have possibly happened the way the client said. They may ask you if you were in a hurry, you were late for work, late for school. The defense is going to ask anything they can to make it look like uh, your story just doesn't add up. With regard to your treatment, um, in addition to asking you if you had kept all of your appointments, if you didn't make your appointments, ask you why you didn't make your appointments, you know, if you start to go to therapy and then you don't go to therapy for three weeks and you start treating again, they're going to wonder how hurt you really were because you weren't able to keep your treatment. Um, so it's important that you do that. Uh, they may ask you about, well, they always ask, who referred you to the doctor? Why'd you go? Why didn't you go to your family doctor? Um, why didn't you go to this kind of doctor or that kind of doctor? And those are the basic questions they're going to ask you. With regard to permanent injuries, they're going to ask you why you haven't gone back to the doctor. You expect to get any other treatment. They may ask you about the specific therapy that you had and have you describe it just to make sure, in fact, you went. They may ask you what kind of doctor you saw, meaning was it a man or woman, just to verify that you actually saw someone. Um, there's all kinds of tricky questions that these people ask in order to try and make you look bad. So it's important in all of these cases that you not only go over your direct examination, but you also go over your cross-examination uh, with your lawyer several times before you try your case so that you're aware of all the questions that are going to be asked. If you do that, then your case will go well. If you don't, then your case is not likely to go well. Again, thank you for listening to this podcast. My name is Mark Addis from the Law Offices of Mark Addis and Associates. My office is located at 6 East Mulberry Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. My phone number is 410-752-4878. My, eight, my 800 number is 800-849-4878. My email address is mattis, M-A-T, like Tom, A-S, like Sam, at Addis Law, like lawyer, L-A-W. Dot com. I would love to hear from you if you've been involved in an auto accident or a work-related injury.